Ibiza Radio News. Lena Sakot vulnerable in the hands of public transport while the resolution between the Department of Education and the school is pending. People residing in Atrechville traveling to and from Tabatswani using the Atrechville bus service suffer the challenges that come with the ineffective service. To some, it is the public transport that is convenient, cheap and of personal choice. But most out of these people who cannot opt for private transport, they suffer the consequences of catching later buses. That's being late for school getting dam rates and eventually suspended from school. There is more than one bus that goes to Tabatswani and returns back to Archridgeville. If the buses do not show up, the learners take the buses that are primarily used mostly by working class in that midst. And this is the treatment they get in the bus. <laughs> When asked why they cannot opt for private transport, and so this makes a profile of Lena that goes to school far from home as a parent express her deepest concerns. The reporter Haurela spoke to the principal of Fort Reker Wachter High, Mr. Fender, asking whether indeed they face challenges with learners coming with public transport. Um, I understand that you have problems with kids who are coming from Atridgeville with the bus services? Yes, we do. The bus services are totally. Uh, well, the buses are breaking on a daily basis, and we've spoken to the Atrisol bus service, but their hands are tied, so they need new buses and they don't get the subsidy from the city of Tswani. So they are really in a bad situation. At the moment, what we are doing is we are advising the learners to organize their own transport through their parents, because it's not the responsibility of the school to get the learners to the school. Uh, we're a Section 21 school, so we're not at no fee-paying school, therefore the the department does not issue us with drivers or any transport. So it's the learner's own responsibility to get to school. They further conversed about the steps that the school takes with this regard. Having one reason and having it unsolved, it becomes a very huge crisis for the well, school. Well, it, it could be. You see, the problem is the learners are coming from Atridgeville and there's only certain transport that coming, uh, that's coming to Tabatswani, to mm. our area. So it's frustrating and, and, and there's a reason why the parents are putting them in the school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then thus far when um, the learners would be late, what, what type of, of steps did the school take? Look, we've got a late register mm -hmm. that is taken as the learners are coming in. What happens then is um, they go to school the moment when the bell rings for the end of the register period or the end of any period so that they don't, um, uh, you know, disturb any of the classes. So, um, say for instance, the bell would ring at quarter to nine and they arrive at the school at half past eight. Then they come in at the gate, we mark them on the late register, which then goes to the lady who does all the lights and all the absentees. But then when the bell rings at quarter two, we release them to the classes. So that's what's happening in the morning with the latecomers. The problem is, um, the policy is very clear. After four times late, we then uh, call the parents in, uh, because then we need to know from the parents why are the children four times late already. The ABS CEO, Ms. Bugeka, claimed she hasn't heard this story and it was never brought to her attention. However, she recommended us to her colleague, Mr. Kola. Yes, the connection. With the bus services that's happening in Atridgeville? Bus services? Yes, Atridgeville bus service. Okay, what is the issue? There are buses that fetch students from Atridgeville, transporting them to Tabatswani. So we have noticed that the bus has been slacking in the past four months, and specifically in this current um, academic year, bus Eo only twice to take the kids from Tabatswani back home. What is going on with these buses? Okay, uh, let me check what the status is uh, with the centre manager there in, in Atridgeville. 
Okay. Can you call me? Yeah, can you call me tomorrow morning so that I get all the details? When I talk to you, I have all the information. C- come from Archisville to Tabatuan. Eh. Hey. Okay. You're telling me you're hearing this for the first time from me? We're providing a service to different areas. I can so I check specifically. I need to check specifically. You're referring to one area that we are not providing a service. Yes. I haven't heard any complaints about Tabatuan. So I'm asking you to give me time to check with the centre manager as to what's happening with the bus is going there. Howell spoke to Mr. Kula, who at first was reluctant to speak to us, saying he wanted to confirm with Ms. Bukega if he is permitted to speak to us. And five minutes later, this is the conversation that transpired. Hello. Mr. Kula, why did you hang up the phone on us? No, I was calling my principal first. I wanted to phone my principal. You were calling her as well. No, 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 no. I'm saying, uh, uh, look, look, I'm working for the company. She said we I must call you. Must, no, 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 no. I must get it from her because this thing turns in the future. The first days I'm, I'm not giving you instruction to do it. So I was making sure that she knows. Now, do you want me to play you a recording where she said you can call Mr. Gola? No, 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 no. No, I don't work like that. You have your own rules. We have our own rules. So I'm using my rules of the company. So did you call her? Look, listen. I've spoken to Dr. Keta. And? I know that I can give you feedback. So I'm waiting for your call. Now you have called. Now we can talk. What's the feedback? Uh, about 643. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's not only 643. There are quite a number of shifts. We are, as a company, we acknowledge that we have a problem that has started sorry, two or three years ago in connection with the buses. But the company, as we speak, we are making everything in our power to try and secure buses so that we must be able to cover all the issues that are giving our passengers the community of appreciate problems. This is what is happening at the moment. We are having a meeting even tomorrow to try and solve this problem out by acquiring buses to someone so mm. that we can help us and help our passengers. So what steps did you take as a company to inform passengers about this matter? Because you say uh-huh. it is between two to three years. All the passengers that uses our buses on a daily basis they know we've been communicating with them, they understand that their problem is this thing has been now escalating for quite some time. Uh, that's their problem. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is a state owned company uh, owned by, by, by Northwest. So we are communicating. So you know, this, this, this uh, 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 company that we know the company can, can't just take a position as, as yourself, or it must go through all this. Uh, 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 leaders and every, everyone. But now I think you are at an advanced stage that you can get buses at, at any time from now. I cannot say tomorrow after two days, but we are, we are very much at an advanced stage to get the buses to the, I mean, the problem that we are having. Are you also aware that specifically people who are getting affected are also the learners of World Tracker Work, that they arrive at school late? We are away, we are away, 100% away. Okay. That is why we are saying we are trying to source buses uh, uh, so that we can alleviate the problems that we are having. As early as, 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 as January to February, we know it's affecting our passengers, uh, uh, learners, and, and adults who are going to work. We are away, our passengers are away, we have this problem. But you know, you know, a person is buying a ticket. We will not understand the same way that you understand these things. But we know they are our passengers, and we will help them out this roused a concerning factor, which is that the interview was made away for Ms. Bukega to permit it within five minutes. But an ongoing problem that, as Mr. Kula stated, has been going for three years, yet Mrs. Bukega had no knowledge of it, hence we were referred to Mr. Kula. Furthermore, looking at this mistreatment faced by the learners in the other buses, we spoke to one of the drivers to understand why he let this go. 
it can be deduced that there is some idea going around that says the learners are in the bus as a favor passed on to them. Hence, my colleague was led to ask Mr. Gola. Learners are not necessarily considered as one of your clientele. So can you please verify that? No, learners are our clientele. They are buying tickets. Mm. Yeah, no, they are our clientele, man. They are buying tickets. They are our clientele. Mm. This is why I'm saying it does not only affect learners. We are giving the, 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 the workers as well. The I'm, I'm, workers as well. Mr. Bola. They are also affected. Yes, man. We are not disputing that the workers are also yes. affected. The issue that drove the story was the concern that there are more than 100 learners who complain, who say that when, when 43, specifically 43, because of they relied on it, when 43 slacks and it does not start picking them up from CISO, going straight down to Mareka right up until it goes to Fort Reker. They are having to walk from that area to that side, the main road, which is close to a 20 minutes to 30 minutes walk. And when they get there, they are already late for the main bus that rides Fort Reker. But when they t attempt to go to other buses, they get held at, they get violated, well, ver verbally violated by people, adults in that uh, bus. And somebody justified the matter saying that the, the learners are not the clientele and that is why they are being insulted and they are not being well catered for. They are being chucked out of buses and especially even their 2 o'clock bus that fetches them at school. It only started fetching them from Thursday. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I, I don't know who the person is, but, but that is not not what what what, what the company says. What we are saying is that learners are also our our clientele. We must help them as much as we can help the others, the other workers. It's not it's not meaning that we we. we I don't know who the person is, but the correct information for me is that we should help everybody. Mm. We should help every, even those learners. Those are the leaders of tomorrow. We should help them. Maybe there's something that I don't know that doesn't told you. I don't know. Since we last spoke to the ABS, they said they're working on the progress. Yet thus far there hasn't been any changes. We spoke to Mr. Steve, spokesperson of the Department of Basic Education, about scholar transport being provided for the learners. The scholar transport, uh, it's not everyone who qualifies for scholar transport. It depends on the school certification thereof. Uh, does this school qualify for scholar transport? All those things, so many things that are involved there. Yeah. Probably the school that they are going into does not even qualify for scholar transport. Mm -hmm. Well, what makes so, a school qualify for scholar transport, sir? It's Quantal. It's a uh, school between Quantal 1 and 3. Those are no fee paying schools that qualify for scholar transport. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly your Quantal 1 to 3. Their parents are not working. Uh, their parents are probably on. Uh, such a grant or grants, um, there's no source of income, there's so many elements which will then say this school is going down one to three. A school that didn't qualify, that wasn't eligible uh, for a number of years, would it be possible for it to move from being uneligible to being eligible? Yes, it does. You find that the school was like for instance, I can make an example for you. There's a school in Sosanguve. Um, it did very well in terms of the performance. Uh, but when you look where they are situated, they are in an area where most of the people there it's uh, it's elderly people. But uh, so they come from the neighboring uh, townships like Winterfell because they are still within the five kilometer radius. So. They are in that school, but most of the uh, learners there, uh, they come from, you know, uh, different backgrounds, and then you profile them. So to an extent that we have changed those schools, because it was a quintal four, we have to move it to quintal three, which makes it uh, easy for us to fund it differently, because after categorizing the school, you then fund it differently because there are those that must also get nutrition, as you know, that we feed them. Uh, school, uh, learners at different schools. Uh, so all those elements, they then 
classify a school differently. So that school you're talking about, what, uh, what school for tracker? It's a quantum five. Yes. So it's, a, it's the, the last number yes, yeah, 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 for Baba Patela. Mm. It's, not even a, it's not even a quantum four. So it means a learner that, that, that attend that school, their parents afford. That was what was happening for quite a number of time, but it is not exactly that way anymore. We'll, we'll revisit. Okay, initially that is the government's responsibility or rather the department's responsibility to check that such uh, a case is happening when... No, it is no, it is the school itself. It's the school that must, must initiate. school must initiate. The school must see that, hey, you know, we are, think we are not affording that. Uh, probably will be a no fee in school. That's mm. what you want. Then they must submit. But most of the schools don't want to be in no, no fee in school. They initiate and do all the necessary paperwork. Then we, we, we reclassify them as a quintal three. And then we go to all those learners, they will then qualify for scholar transport. And when we go on tender for scholar transport, we will also include their school. They won't need to do anything. And then those learners will then be fetched by our own scholar transport, which we know, according to the service level agreement, they know that the learners must not be late. They, they then conform to the service level agreement. But if they don't do that, we can terminate that contract because we appoint them to bring, uh, you know, learners on time. So if they don't do that, they don't qualify to be paid. So um, then the school, uh, there's a reluctance in uh, being a no fee paying school. But then we must ask them, why don't you want to be a no fee paying school? Probably they'll then give you their answers. The school principal said they are not reluctant to change the quantile of the school. We wanted to just find out, um, are you considering maybe changing the quantile? Yes, but look, that is a process that will be handled with a new HGB. We tried that before, and I have numerous letters that we wrote to the head of the department with the previous HGB. It was in a, in a question of five letters over the last nine years from 2009. But they never changed our quintal. Learners who cannot afford private transports remain stranded while pending for a resolution. I'm Kulfelo Paho. Kaohelo Pagula. Reporting for UNISA Radio News. UNISA Radio News. Learners are caught vulnerable in the hands of public transport while the resolution between the Department of Education and the school is pending. People residing in Atrechville traveling to and from Tabatswani using the Atrechville bus service suffer the challenges that come with the ineffective service. To some, it is the public transport that is convenient, cheap, and of personal choice. But most out of these people who cannot opt for private transport, they suffer the consequences of catching later buses. That's being late for school gating dam rates and eventually suspended from school. There is more than one bus that goes to Tabatswani and returns back to Archridgeville. If the buses do not show up, the learners take the buses that are primarily used mostly by working class in that midst. And this is the treatment they get in the bus. When asked why they cannot opt for private transport, and so this makes a profile of Lena that goes to school far from home as a parent express her deepest concerns. The reporter Haurela spoke to the principal of Fort Reker Wachte High, Mr. Fender, asking whether indeed they face challenges with learners coming with public transport. Um, I understand that you have problems with kids who are coming from Atridgeville with the bus services? Yes, we do. The bus services are totally 
uh, well, the buses are breaking on a daily basis, and we've spoken to the Atrisol bus service, but their hands are tied, so they need new buses and they don't get the subsidy from the city of Tswani. So they are really in a bad situation. At the moment, what we are doing is we are advising the lenders to organize their own transport through their parents, because it's not the responsibility of the school to get the lenders to the school. Uh, we're a 621 school, so we're not at no.